We all remember friendlies, the childhood nostalgia, the ice cream, birthday cakes, the chicken tenders, hot dogs, mac and cheese. I'm sure it's giving most of you memories right now. But have you looked around lately? There's pretty much no friendlies in sight. From boasting 850 locations to a dwindling 138, today we're looking back on how one of the most loved family friendly restaurants went from being in almost every city on the east coast to being just a faded memory. Well, you know how these videos work. We gotta go back to the start of it all. All the way back to 1935, at the height of the Great Depression, when two brothers, Curtis and Presley Blake, opened up a small little ice cream shop in Springfield, Massachusetts, calling it Friendly. They offered a unique double dipped cone for only 5 cents and it gave them an opportunity to do what they loved while trying to make some extra money during a hard time, and also giving people a sweet treat to maybe try and cheer them up. It ended up doing fairly well and by 1940 they would open a second stand, this time adding more food to the menu besides ice cream. The Blake brothers did decide to close the restaurants down during World War II, but the hiatus didn't affect them a bit. Between 1945 and 1950, they had managed to open a total of 10 friendly locations, even expanding into the next door neighbor Connecticut. A fun fact here is that the Blake brothers would actually around this time make a deal with Ray Kroc for his milkshake machine invention, well before he was the CEO of McDonald's. And in 1950, they revolutionized the ice cream game in New England by being the first restaurant to start selling take home half gallons of their ice cream. This was an insane addition to the already growing Friendly's menu and added to the craze the business was having. In 1960, they moved their headquarters from the flagship city of Springfield to more rural Wilbraham, where they sat adjacent to a creamery that produced milk for the company and even still does today. They dedicated their new headquarters to their parents with a plaque that's also still there. In 1965, Friendly's would finally expand out of New England and open their first restaurant in New Jersey. Another fun fact you might not know is the Blake Brothers created several official spin-off restaurants, either catering to a specific region or food. So if you've ever been to a Jim Dandy's, O Goodies, Specials, or Company C, then congrats, you just had Friendly's reskinned. The next decade saw exponential growth for Friendly's, expanding to nearly 500 restaurants by 1974, including even moving to New York City. It was really unfathomable how fast the company was growing, and it was starting to catch up to the Blake Brothers. So just five years later, in 1979, the restaurant would make its biggest deal ever. In 1979, co-founders and brothers Presley and Curtis Blake sold the Friendly's business and trademark to Hershey's for a reported $162 million, which today would be around $750 million. Because of this, Friendly's was able to do a lot more promotional events and add fun things to the menu like Reese's Pieces, Oreos, and Heath Bars. In 1981, they began their sponsorship of the Easter Seal Campaign, which, as of 2015, Friendly's has donated over $28 million to. And in 1982, they set the Guinness World Record for the world's largest milkshake. By the mid-80s, the restaurant had finally managed to expand their way down to the Virginias, and they weren't done with the record-breaking, because in 1984, at the Weybridge, Vermont County Fair, they were awarded an award for the world's longest banana split, which used over three tons of ice cream and spanned two and a half miles. And while we're on the topic, and since I'm a proud Vermonter, you better watch your step friendlies, okay? Because this has been in Jerry's territory. And just a year later, the company would celebrate their 50th anniversary. It seemed like everything was going right for the company, and it kinda was. And to top it off in 1987, they would start selling their gallons in supermarkets, with the first one ever being a price shopper in Albany. A store, which I've been to by the way, flex. But safe to say this was an undeniable break for the company, and one of the first of its kind. No one had ever seen a product they loved from a restaurant so much right in front of their faces at a store that you could buy and go eat in the comfort of your own home. It was revolutionary. So what did Hershey's decide to do in 1988 after just 9 years of ownership and revolutionizing the grocery store ice cream game? Sell the entire company to Donald Smith and fellow investors of Tennessee Restaurant Company for about $324 million, literally twice what they bought it for, marketing geniuses. And the reason for this is kinda unclear, but from what I've learned in past lookbacks, specifically Icebreakers and Fruit Stripe, we know that in the mid 80s to late 90s, Hershey's was kinda just confused about what they wanted to be, and they bought, sold, merged, unmerged several times throughout the years until they finally decided in the 2000s to just mainly focus on chocolate. But with all that, we would enter another new era for the restaurant. 
So now TRC is the owner of Friendly, and one of the first things they do was add the apostrophe S to it. I know I've already been saying Friendly's a lot throughout the video, but just know that pre-1989 it was Friendly, and post-1989 it's Friendly's. Just some fun trivia for some fellow nerds. One of the first big things TRC did with Friendly's was try to expand it into an international market, specifically England and China. However, it wouldn't last long as the quality of cream from their international markets would be unstable, leading them to have to import it from places like France and Spain, which just got really expensive and difficult. However, even though their international ventures were fruitless, 1996 would be the peak year for the franchise as it's reported that they had around 850 restaurants opened across 15 states. They would also sponsor the LPGA, a women's golf tournament four years in a row from 1995 to 98. Yes, that's four years including the 95 tournament, don't get on my case. Also, in 1995, they would start selling the little ice cream sundae cups in stores, followed by the ice cream rolls in 98. Okay, so now, here's where things get interesting and kinda confusing y'all, so stay with me. In 1997, TRC would make the decision for Friendly's to go public regarding its shares. The shares began at $18, peaking at $26 at one point, which is when around 34 stores were sold to Davco restaurants with 14 more being under their control with the ability to be bought eventually. This was one of the first things that struck Presley the wrong way, as Davco was already undergoing scrutiny for how it was managing its own investors and clients, particularly Wendy's, as they were in the midst of trying to go private. One of the things Davco did after the deal with Friendly's was promise to open up 100 more restaurants. Safe to say, investors and employees of the company were pretty darn happy with that. The only problem being that in two years, Davco didn't hold up any end of its agreement. On top of this, Presley was getting increasingly concerned with the current CEO of Friendly, who only held 10% of shares, but did own the majority shares into Perkins, another restaurant that Donald Smith was involved in, and Presley claimed he was unfairly using funds from Friendly's to boost the other restaurant in a way that would damage Friendly's investors, but personally benefit the CEO. On top of that, they also just kinda called him a piece of shit. This caused quite a rift between Blake and TRC, and it actually got to the point where Presley Blake would file a lawsuit against TRC in 2003. The battle would go on in court until August 2007, when finally Blake and Smith agreed to sell Friendly's to Sun Capital Partners for $337 million, almost 30% more than what the company would have been averaged. But it was enough for everyone to let bygones be bygones. Well, Actually, in 2008, Harvard used this as a case study for a business course and even had a 93-year-old Presley Blake as a guest speaker. But then, it was over. Well, through the legal battles that ensued, Friendly's was still able to do some cool things. In 2005, they would introduce the ice cream cakes to supermarkets, and for the first year, get this, the cakes were actually all made by hand. Until they realized how unstable that was and created a custom cake automation factory just a year later. In 2013, Friendly's was awarded yet another Guinness World Record for holding the world's largest ice cream party. Yeah, seriously. 2013 would also be the year they would introduce their novelty line of items, which are the things you see in like boxes. In 2015, they would introduce their specialty birthday cakes, most notably the Oreo one, but also a Reese's one and a Crayola one, which you can customize yourself. I didn't even know that existed. In 2016, Dean Foods would buy a portion of Friendly's from Sun Capital Partners, the retail side of it, which means all restaurants are still currently run by Sun Capital Partners. But Dean Foods did what Friendly's hadn't done before and wanted to grow nationally. And honestly, in retrospect, it's pretty wild at one point they tried to start businesses in the UK and China in the 90s, but it took until 2016 to reach California. And even more than that, it's wild to me that the Midwest and West Coast didn't even have Friendly's. I didn't even know that until I started doing this video. But sadly, Dean Foods filed for bankruptcy in 2019, and the retail portion of Friendly's was sold to the DFA, where it's still going today, pretty much under the same capacity. So, let's get to the part you've probably been waiting for. What happened to the actual restaurants already, man? You haven't even talked about why they closed down. You just said the old CEO was a dick and that the retail side of the business is banging now. But what about my chicken tendies, man? Well, I kinda already did, in a way. So, remember Donald Smith and how he was a shitty CEO? Well, one of the things he did while he was in charge was try and sell off a bunch of Friendly's restaurants to make back some debt the company was in. And why was the company in debt, you ask? Well, because the Blake brothers wanted to open fucking 500 casual dining restaurants all pretty much within the same area. I mean, can you imagine if there were over 100 Applebee's in any state, let alone a small one like Massachusetts? I mean, it would be pretty insane. 
And while yes, even people like me, who live in small areas, are always like, well why don't we have any cool restaurants? Well, I know why. It's because it wouldn't be stable from a revenue point, obviously. I mean, if we have four connecting towns, let's say that each one has around 50,000 people, while the surrounding towns only have about 10,000. Most people would be like, well, I'm going to open my restaurant in the most populous city, knowing people from surrounding areas will come and try. They wouldn't open up restaurants in each of the cities with the hopes that each one is going to pull a steady customer base every day. It's just not plausible. And because of this, Friendly's has always found itself in large amounts of debt. The thing was, they're just kind of good at hiding it. They use good marketing and public events to give the brand a larger image, with what I now think was with the hopes of getting those businesses more customers. And which is why I also think the brothers were ready to sell it to Hershey back in 1979, even though it was obvious Presley cared so much about it still. And probably another reason why Hershey wanted out so quickly, because they're smart enough to have seen what was coming, and probably just wanted to jump ship. So, even as early as the 90s, when the company was under the TRC ownership, they were already closing down restaurants to try and save money. This trend would continue up until the Sun Capital deal of 2007. And even though executives were optimistic the new ownership would do well, it's kind of proven anything but. Even though in 2008 they started the sensational I Wanna Go To Friendly's campaign, it didn't stop the numbers from dwindling. And in 2011, the company officially filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, for the first time. At the time, the company maintained over 400 restaurants and employed around 10,000 people. Following this hard financial reset, optimism was high among executives at the restaurant chain. In a press release, the company said they had secured approximately $70 million in new financing, which, along with cash flow, would provide the working capital necessary to meet its ongoing obligations during the restructuring. The bankruptcy's filing was designed to provide Friendly's with the tools and time to strengthen its balance sheet, close underperforming restaurants, revisit certain agreements, and reposition the company for long-term success. A year later, when the company emerged from bankruptcy in 2012, it had closed over 100 stores and bankruptcy proceedings had wiped away nearly $300 million in debt, including pension plans for employees who had been promised a comfortable retirement. Sun Capital did try to bring Friendly's to the market to be auctioned, but Nobody wanted it, so they kind of just kept it. It was obvious, however, that they were not able to keep up with the restaurants, especially while the retail side of the business kept growing so exponentially. So, they made the decision in 2016 to sell the retail side of it to Dean Foods, and well, we know what happened from there. But on the restaurant side of things, they kind of just tried to stay positive. I mean, it must have been pretty confusing for them, because every time Friendly's gets taken away from an area, people get upset but yet the ones that are staying open aren't getting more business. In fact, they're either plateauing or losing customers. So Sun Capital just kept all the restaurants open that they could, until finally in 2020 they filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy yet again, this time citing the COVID pandemic as the main cause. So in 2021, they finally sold it to Amici Partners, an investing group made up of previous restaurant chefs. And they sold it for $2 million. Yeah, only $2 million. Literally, somebody like Will Yachty could have bought Friendly's. And honestly, I'm kind of mad he didn't. But, since ownership, Amici Partners have kept all locations open, and even started branching out in some southern states like Texas. Looking back, we get to see the story of two old-fashioned American brothers who just had an idea to start an ice cream stand to help people out, and eventually it just grew into this massive chain with over 500 locations just under their ownership. And while the problems at the corporate level didn't help at all, let's talk about some other reasons Friendly's probably hasn't been doing so well. I mean, to start, it's pretty cheap food. While yes, it might be a tad better than some you could cook at home, it was more on the same par as like Denny's, IHOP, or Applebee's. Which, nothing wrong with any of those places, I mean, I'm poor and I still regular many of them, but each of those restaurants offer a unique experience. Applebee's has a bar, Denny's are open late, IHOP is a flashback to the 50s, and Friendly's was, well, Friendly's. While we all remember the ice cream and cakes and the bright red booths, I mean, what else can we really remember about Friendly's? I mean, they were kind of basic when you think about it. They were open normal hours, they didn't have anything super funky on the menu. They didn't cater to any niche, except family, I guess. But it's always just felt so lackluster, like it was missing an aesthetic direction. And that's one problem, even still to this day with the new owners, is they don't try to modernize it in any way. And no, I'm not saying change the logo or anything, right? But you gotta cater to a specific niche, make your restaurants aesthetically similar, have more iconic menu items instead of like the friendly burger. Come on, guys. 
Also, the inside of them gave off that 90s, 2000s, sticky, hot, puffy boots, pulling up a high chair to the edge of the table, carpeted floor vibe. They just never did anything to keep up with the times. Another thing is restaurant chains in general are kind of going through hard times right now. I mean, while COVID was detrimental and a common blame, we gotta understand that most of these restaurants are catered to a middle class America, a class that is dying out pretty hard. I mean, with the pandemic, recession, inflation, housing crisis, gas crisis, drug crisis, you name it, the comfortable fantasy of a middle class lifestyle has almost fully vanished in today's America. And finally, maybe they just shouldn't have opened so many restaurants and spin-offs, and maybe they should have tried to expand to the west coast before literally England and China. But that's just what I think. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Whether you're happy or sad about friendlies now, I know I'll always definitely reminisce on the one birthday party I had there when I was 8 years old. And now, the time I went there, they document it before it's possibly gone for good one day, with all my viewers. Kinda. And if you're interested in more Friendly's lore, check out this presentation from Friendly's historian Rose Slate, who has worked for the company for years and years, and actually has a really unbiased view on their history, and gives a lot of deep cuts about the lore. And for everyone else who's still here, thank you so much for watching. You guys are the bomb.com, and I really mean that. Please subscribe and give this video a like. And hey, maybe even check out another video, or go through the look back playlist. I got lots more fun videos, and you'd really help me with my channel engagement. <laughs> Nah, I'm just kidding. Peace.